Counter Punch Boxing. We're back with another one. All right, how you guys doing out there? Uh, today, November 24th, happy Thanksgiving. Anyone who is watching and uh, celebrates uh, Thanksgiving if you're here in America. If not, you know, uh, hope you're having a good day. <laughs> but, uh, all right, look, today, 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 we're going to go, we're going to do a quick little Loma and Walter's video. Um, my voice is kind of dry, kind of hoarse. I've been doing a lot of talking lately, a lot of videos, a lot of debating, a lot of everything. And, uh, you know, hopefully the quality is all right out there. But, yeah, look, look all right, let me start out. Uh, and I put out another video, but I wanted to add a few things to it. And so I thought I'd make another one. I can tell you right now, the video today is going to be about, probably about 14 minutes long. Uh, the pictures you're looking at, you know, I kinda, I'm kind of on a time frame here. But uh, Loma, all right, Loma, 6-1-0, uh, Walters, 26-1, 26, 26, uh, one, one draw, we know that, Jason Sosa draw. Uh, Loma debut 2013, Southpaw, 5-6, 60, 65 and a half inch reach. Uh, Coming off a win uh, against Martinez, KO, beautiful fight, beautiful knockout. Loma looked great in that fight, as usual. Uh, he got that one loss to uh, Orlando Salido, and uh, we know what happened there. You know, um, Salido was fighting dirty and low blows and headbutt and elbow. He came in overweight. You know, Loma didn't even have to take that fight. Came in overweight. Uh, then he ended up losing. I was like, man, it's just, you know, I don't know. That one kind of dark dark mark on his uh, record I don't like. But, um, you know, I heard those guys are going to rematch. And, you know, Loma can get a little bit of redemption. And, and hopefully he will because, like I said, I don't, it, that fight really bothered me, you know. Now, I don't know, a lot of you guys are probably catching on. I don't like the unfairness and the injustice in boxing. I don't like the corruption or the bullshit. You know, I get really, really worked up and really passionate about it. But, uh, yeah, all right. So, Walters, uh, you know, he's, he's got a few names on there, too. He's got Nonito Denaire. Uh, he won the WBA featherweight, on no, a su uh, super featherweight from uh, Nonito Denaire. Uh, beat Vic Darchinian. Uh you know I mean and really a lot of pretty much a lot of the a lot of guys out there they know Walters uh, from the uh, no Nito Denaire fight you know after that you know because we didn't really know who he was I mean I did well you know not a lot of people really knew you know who he was and that kinda like launched him into you know the the top five conversation okay yeah, he's an orthodox fighter now Loma being a southpaw, I think that's going to give, you know, Walters a lot of problems. I really do. And we'll get into that in a minute. But, uh, you know, I mean, as far as who I think wins, I'll, I'll get to that in a minute. But let, let me just kind of kind of give you a, a few bullet points and uh, a few things that I know will be a factor in the fight. I know, you know, uh, it's going to show up in the fight. Uh I mean, Loma, he lands at a very high percentage. Um, he, he, I mean, the speed, the timing, the accuracy. I mean, this guy is like a sharpshooter with boxing. I mean, he, you know, uh, that hand-eye coordination is incredible. Uh, you know, you know, incredibly athletic. I mean, you know, you watch the videos where he's like doing, doing a handstand, doing push-ups. I mean, the guy is just incredibly, you know, athletic. Uh, and, and in shape I mean just the prime of his life right now uh, and and you know we have you know speed versus power uh, and I know a lot of people out there are worried about that reach now Walt Walters yeah I mean he has incredibly uh, you know long reach uh, I think I want to say I think Loma is like 65 and a half and Walters is like 72 inch, yeah, I believe 72. I know he has like a seven inch reach advantage. I mean, you know, when you think of that, you got to go back to like Manny Pacquiao and Vargas or Manny Pacquiao and Margarito, you know, when you had that huge reach advantage. Um, and we talked about, actually, I brought that up in my prediction for the Manny Pacquiao and Jesse Vargas a prediction video I made. I brought that up, you know, uh, that Walters, you know, had that you know, a long reach, and he does. I mean, some guys they just have long, you know, long, long arms, and and you know, uh, <clears throat> but Walters, you know, he's a you know about this. I think about the same height as uh, Loma. Now, 
you know, if you go to like Boxerec or wherever, um, you know, he's got like a one inch height advantage. But to me, Loma looks taller. But they they always do that, you know, kind of like the Kovalev Ward, where Kovalev, you know, he should have been like an inch taller, but it looked like Andre Ward was actually taller, you know. So yeah. But anyway, um, yeah, that reach. I mean, you have you know you have three three basic counters. I don't want to get into them. I don't want to make the video too long. But one thing you know, I really want you guys to look out for when you have that reach. Okay, uh, whenever you're pulling back, you know. So in other words, Walters he's going to throw. Let's say he's going to throw a left uh, a jab and then like just a right. Okay, just a, just a, like maybe like a right hook. Now, before he can get back, you know, to defend his chin, Loma can come come around or come over the top or come underneath and catch him. And that's one, you know, method of countering. I mean, even if you go to a boxing gym, that's what they're going to teach you. You know, there's like three different ways, and that and that's one of the the three main ways. And what I'm trying to say is, I think Loma is quick enough and explosive enough that he's going to catch Walters before he can even defend, you know, defend himself. You know, just that quickness. You know, having that long reach, when you have that long arm out there, it takes a long time to get it back. And before he can get it back, you know, I think Loma's going to pop him. And, uh, you know, Loma, court, you, using the angles, we know Loma. Man, I mean, and, and no one does it better. Uh, I, I don't think in boxing today, you know, no one can pivot like that. No one can, can punch, you know, with all these crazy angles. I mean, this guy can, like, jump through the air and, like, throw, like, a combo real quick. You know, I mean, he's incredible. He really is. I mean, you know, uh, and look at his resume, okay? I mean, if you look at his resume, there's no other boxer that I can think of that has a resume like that you know I mean when you when you look at any fighter that I mean pick any fighter you like and I guarantee you 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 can't even name or you don't know you know like the first 10 guys on the resume you know <laughs> but you know he's got Ramirez in 2013 uh, and then that loss to Orlando Salido in 2014 Gary Russell jr. Um, that was for the vacant WBO by the way, uh, and then, you know, he's got a couple more on there, like Rodriguez and uh, Martinez, uh, Roman Martinez, I mean, but that's a lot of big names on there, and, you know, to have your second fight, you know, for, uh, to be, you know, for the uh, vacant uh, WBO, I mean, that's just unheard of, you know, your second professional fight is a title fight, you know, I mean, <laughs> uh, so it's incredible, but really, you know, it has a lot to do with uh, his amateur background, and you know being the uh, Olympic champion you know so uh, yeah I think uh, that's just one thing I wanted to point out and not that Walter I mean Walters you know he's got a decent resume it's not bad um, but uh, yeah I mean that 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 kind of that all, all everything we talk about in the prediction videos everything shows up in a fight it really does I mean it's like in boxing every little thing is important you know you wonder why you hear these guys out there talking about these little things but every little thing you know that a lot of guys bring up it'll show up in a fight you know like the next thing I want to talk about and that is uh, you know the inactivity uh, from Walters okay uh, basically I mean I don't want to get too deep into it but um, originally he was offered 500 like 555,000 so pretty much a little bit little over half a million dollars to take the fight um, he turned it down because uh, you know he didn't feel it was enough money and really it's not and then you know and then uh, I heard like there was they were offering like another 300,000 to the winner which would have put him at 800,000 but okay but forget about that they, I think they should have at least given them a million. I mean, because look, after you pay your taxes, your trainer, uh, your traveling, uh, your camp, I mean, your team, your managers, your this, your that, it's a lot of money. Your, your, your fees, I mean, it's a ton of money to fight at that level. I mean, that half a million dollars, it probably would cost them damn near, you know, probably three, four hundred thousand just to get to fight night, okay? Uh, but anyway, Canelo. He, uh, you know, we know he broke his thumb in the Liam Smith fight, and it freed up money. Okay, it freed up money for HBO, uh, and then top rank Bob Arum. Shout out to Bob Arum, uh, you know, Bob getting it done. 
he went to HBO. He said, "Look, you know, uh, you know the the budget. You know, we have a bigger budget now. Let's go ahead and offer Walters a little more money and make the fight happen. You know, Merry Christmas, right? And that's pretty much what happened. Because Canelo had that December 10th fight date, and he, you know, he broke his thumb." He couldn't fight so now they don't have to pay Canelo they have more money to, to put together you know a quick fight at the end of the year and that you know and that's what they were you know they're in competition with Showtime and you know whoever else and uh, Sky Sports you know that kind of thing so yeah they want to you know put together good fights now the picture you're looking at right there the you know I want to get into the weight real quick uh, that inactivity we're talking about right now during the negotiations okay he ballooned up, man. The dude, he looked like he was like 150 pounds. I mean, he looked like bigger than a welterweight. And then now we see that picture right there. Okay, and this is a current, this picture was taken like a day ago. Um, I mean, he looks terrible. I mean, look at that. Just bony, um, frail, weak, unhealthy. You know, I mean, it, that, you know, and, and I know uh, there's a picture coming up in a minute uh that shows him at another weigh-in for another fight i don't think it was this current fight um i could be wrong but uh yeah I'm a, i mean that's a going to be a big concern in the fight uh i mean he's always looked a little thin before a fight but never like that i mean he looks hollow and empty and, and just unhealthy you know what i mean so right there that picture there um Man, I wish I knew what fight that was. It looks like Robert Garcia behind him. Uh, but yeah, you know he ballooned up after the after the Jason Sosa fight. It was a draw, okay. And you know, and I know he was really upset about that. Uh, and then he went right from that to everyone, you know, calling him, you know, oh, you're ducking, uh, you're ducking Loma, blah blah blah. But now we know it was really a money issue. I don't think he was ducking Loma, and he went from that you know to a bullshit draw you're ducking Loma not getting paid enough to finally you know like I said Merry Christmas you know here's another half a million dollars let's make the fight happen you know so when you take that's why I, I just don't think he's gonna win I, I you know when you look at all that and you know you really have to look at who he's up against I mean I think one of the the you know the 